But even I fell into that most terrible of human traps, trying to change what has already passed. Now it's uh, just time to let go. Well, well, if you've been waiting for answers, this was the episode for you. The penultimate episode of Westworld's first season brought along with it a whole host of answers. After the thrilling revelation that Bernard was a horse just a couple of weeks ago, this week we found out that Bernard wasn't truly Bernard. Yep, the popular theory that's been out there for quite a long time now was revealed to be true. Bernard was Arnold. I asked for answers in these last two episodes and well, this episode certainly gave me that. The seeds for this theory were planted very early on in the show. We even saw some brief flashbacks to those hints given to us just to see if you could remember any of them. For me, the one that stuck in my mind the most was that picture taken with Ford and his partners. At the time when Bernard was looking at it, there was a notable gap on the right hand side. And remember the hosts are programmed not to see anything that could hurt them. And Bernard seeing himself as Arnold is something that would do just that. It was a predictable theory once the Bernard was a horse reveal was out of the way, but it took nothing away from the incredible war of words that Ford and Bernard were engaged in. Bernard's cornerstone was his son, and it says it all really in the fact that Ford was always in control. Again, he was just merely playing with his toys. He's been here before, in this exact situation before, but he hoped that in this loop, Bernard would choose different than last time. He wanted his partner back and fell afoul to one of the most terrible human traps in trying to hold on to the past. This time though, he seemed set to leave his past behind. There was no altering what is, as he walked away, leaving Bernard to his demise. And whilst all these memories were being revisited, it tied in neatly with the story for Dolores. The fact that she, the park's oldest host, was the one to kill Arnold was a shocking revelation. It wasn't Ford, as many people, including me, were leaning towards. Maybe she was ordered to do it, like a kill me and be free sort of thing, the kind of story that iRobot has. We don't fully know yet. It could have played out in similar circumstances as how we saw in this episode with only Clementine holding the gun this time, where originally it was Dolores. But whether it's next week or not, this question will have to be answered. And whilst on the topic of Dolores, ouch, what a painful experience her and William had to go through. You knew they were going to be in for a tough time after being caught last week, but with him being tied to a chair as Logan played and eventually stabbed Dolores right in front of him was the final straw. He's been embracing the violent side of the pack a lot more in this back half of the season, and from what we saw here, that isn't going to stop now. Logan has tipped him over the edge. His torture of Dolores into having him see the true nature of the pack was his turning point his downfall, and after Dolores fled the scene, William began a massacre. He finally understood how to play the game, and now he plays by his own rules. And there's a certain, possibly somebody else, who also likes to play by his own rules. I've said this before, I never really looked into the William is the Man in Black theory too much, because there were a lot of theories out there, and most of them have some kind of substance, but now, yeah. I sort of expect that reveal to come forward in next week's finale. There were plenty of hints again, Dolores expecting to see William at the church door only to be confronted by the man in black, and of course, check the knife. Williams in this scene and the man in blacks throughout the whole season are now identical. We also learned that the man in black is a member of the park's board, and someone who kept Ford in business quite some time ago. Charlotte found him wanting his approval for ousting Ford, but he couldn't really give a damn at this point. He knows what he's after and doesn't want anyone to get in his way. Maeve was back at base being analysed after deviating off course. She got the perfect specialist into looking after her though, as she was able to use her new abilities to even control Bernard. I'll admit to being a little puzzled on one front here. Bernard is a host, right? Okay, and Ford told us that he manufactured him in order so that he only could assume direct control over him. So how the hell was Maeve able to freeze him in his place? I'm not sure on this one, to be honest, but she got Bernard to clear her and reinstate her back into the park. She found Hector, the bandit she was after, and saved him from his sorry fate. 
She has begun the gathering of her forces, so I am extra eager to see if she can free Hector and his mind back at HQ. And if she can, trouble will be on the horizon. My God, I'm... Arnold. The penultimate episode of Westworld's first season gave us the most answers that we have been craving for a long time. And for me, it is a 9 out of 10. The episode wasted no time and started off on strong footing. And that was present throughout. Bernard's analysis of Maeve and her knowing almost immediately that he was one of them was a fantastic way to kick off the episode. Thandi Newton has been great all season, and hopefully Jeffrey Wright, following the fate of Bernard and Arnold, will still be a part of the show. Interesting fact, Bernard Law is an anagram of his true identity, Arnold Webber. And we only just found out Arnold's surname as Dolores was walking those halls. But I'm sure there are some intelligent folks out there who already had that one figured out. Kudos to those who did. Dolores walking through those destroyed halls is proof that she was retracing her steps. We are definitely seeing more than one time frame. We see the original, the past, where she was with William, and now I presume we're in the present day, where she was imagining William alongside her as she retraced her steps. And yes, I was grasping at it last week, but damn you if you want to take it away from me. Elsie has to be alive, she just has to be. Another showing of her being choked out and not right killed is just constantly growing my hopes. And with Stubbs going after her signal and being captured as well, it just adds to the fact that I do think she's alive. I tell you, we better find out next week because I don't think it's fair to wait till season 2. But you know what TV's like, it can be cruel sometimes. And I haven't even talked about Teddy. His origin was far darker than anyone would have expected. We've seen the massacre before, but now we know the whole truth. His part in the massacre and seeing him brutally murder innocent townspeople is the polar opposite from the heroic cowboy we saw in episode 1. He died again of course, classic Teddy, but at least he got some enlightenment. Maybe next time Teddy, maybe next time. Phew, a lot went on in this week's episode and all that's left is the finale. And for that, I cannot wait. Bring it on. So that does it from me. What did you think about the penultimate episode of Westworld's first season? And are you convinced that William is now the man in black? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye, my friend.